Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. Today is going to be a great day. I got two killer high performance Fords in. Can't wait to show you them. And yes, one of them is a Holy Grail car. I haven't said Holy Grail in a long time, but if you stay till the end, we're going to go to one of our other warehouses. We're going to do a walk around on it. I think you will be thoroughly impressed because I surely am. When I started this venture in life, buying and selling cars, uh, one of the cars I hit on heavy and started buying actually when I was 14, 15 years old were Mustangs. I love 65 to 70 Mustangs, but I really love 65 to 70 Shelbys. And I actually like every single year Shelby, whether it was the 65, 66 done at Shelby or the A.O. Smith cars or the later model Ford cars. Now we got one that just came in on the trailer. Unfortunately, I couldn't go visit the owners of this car and buy it. I really wanted to. Wow, it's hot and it's good. What we're going to go look at is I have not unloaded out of the trailer. I have not put my eyes on it, but I did spend two to three months talking to this family to get this car. A lot of people that have Shelby's, yes, I'm loading my coffee up, are very emotionally attached to them. And this family owned this car for 45 years. Let's go check it out. Alex. Morning. Let's go ahead and load the Shelby. Yeah. So we got a gazillion things going on, as usual. Morning, Juice. Morning, Morning Colin. Morning, Dennis. I like your shirt. Thank you. So this is kind of uh, probably out of our wanted dead or alive section. This car was partially disassembled years ago for a repaint. But as I said, the family's owned it for 45 years. Now, Chuck said when he picked this up that he drove it in here. <laughs> I'm not sure how long it's been sitting. Uh, I think about 10 years is what they think. Um, some people's concept of time changes over time, but let's get in and fire it up and get it out and see what we got. So as you can see up at the tail end of this car, it's either going to be a 69 or a 70. This particular car is a 1969. It is a GT350. Well, let's get it out, do a walk around. I'll explain to you the rare options on the car and why I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's cool. Whenever you find a Shelby, it's awesome. There it is. No matter how long you've done this in life, whenever you find a Shelby, get one back into circulation, it's always exciting. I personally really like the 69 and 70s. They're killer cars. Good morning, Kels. What's up? Hey, Kelsey Lord's in the house. A little party <laughs> <in> coffee <box. laughs> Well, we're going to fire this up. This car's supposed to run, so, so watch out. So be ready. It's been sitting for about 10 years. How cool is that? So now that you're out here, let me tell you what let me tell you what we got. Alex is always interested in learning too, which I greatly appreciate that both of you guys are. Okay. So what we have here is a 69 GT350. 69 and 70 cars were the same. What happened is the cars that didn't sell in 1969 got revenged as 70. Now, as far as the GT350 fastback, there was only 935 of these cars ever built. And the most desirable color of this car is black jade. And guess what? It's black jade. <laughs> also, from there, the most desirable color combination of the black car is black interior. Then your next most desirable option is going to be a four-speed. This is a factory close ratio four-speed car with a 325 to 1 gear ratio. How do I know that? The VIN number. I've got, I've got the warranty tag here which they took off because they painted the car. So you've got body 63C, which means it's a fastback. Mm -hmm. You've got C5, which is black jade. You have 3A, which is black interior. 21E is your date. And here's what's really neat. When you come up to these tags in DSO and almost all Mustangs I've shown you guys, you have two digits. Mm -hmm. When your first two digits starts with an 8-4, 
that means home office, which generally means it's a Shelby. Here, show, See right here, 8-4? Yeah, so this is usually how many digits? Two. Two, and now it's... For instance, Dallas is 61. So, and then your order number is 2690. Then you come to here, axle 9. A 9 axle is a 325. Mm -hmm. And then 6, which you hope to see a 6, is a close ratio four speed which versus wide race, which it comes out of the hole faster. Mm -hmm. Better for racing, if you will, or just even for fun on the street. If you're so there you Collins, have it. It's yep. better for fun on the street. Yep. <laughs> and then there's two really neat things on a Shelby VIN that Ford actually saved for Shelby when you walk up to one. If you look in the VIN and you see a 4.8 in the middle of the VIN, you know it's a Shelby. So the 4.8 number designation was saved for Shelby. For instance, we have actually bought some of these cars and pulled them out of fields. We've bought some of these cars and pulled them out of wrecking yards. And most of the Shelby pieces are gone. And if you know that, you might just find a real gem. So other than that, this car, I think has been sitting for about 10 years. What we're gonna do with this car, Alex, and, this, and now that seeing it, even though we haven't inspected it real heavily, this is a 60,000 mile car. I have really good pictures of the bottom. It's not rusty. We're going to put this car back together. We're going to buff it, wax it, service it. We're not going to do an over-the-top restoration. And our goal is, again, wanted dead or alive, is to get these cars out of people's garages, out of barns, and back into circulation. Yep. So I'm pretty confident in the next 10 days that Alex can get this car back on the street. What do you think? Oh, guaranteed. All right. Next, what I want to show you is we're going to head over to the other warehouse for our Holy Grail Ford find. Haven't done a Holy Grail in a while. we got a couple coming up. Let's go see what else we found. Yep. All right, you two, you ready to see a Holy Grail car? All right, and it's a Ford, so we'll stick with what we're going on today. Went from a Shelby to another special high-performance Ford. I am pretty sure neither of you guys have ever seen one of these, at least not with these options. Y'all just stay right here. Hold on. Lots of suspense. Okay, either of you guys ever seen one of those? I'm sure y'all have seen a Torino, but this one is incredibly special. This is going to be a long-winded education, but it's worth it. Okay. Okay. So this is a 1970 Torino. Okay, what's your question? question. Is there going to be a test? Maybe. Maybe. Right. That's not a question about the car. But it was, well, you asked for, well, you asked okay. the question. Okay. 1970 Torino Cobra, which in itself is very special. It's really special about this car. I'm going to give a little backstory of this car. They're going to show you the options on it, which is what makes it amazing. This is a one family owned car since new. You see this license plate, Lorraine? Lorraine was the plant where the Trinos were built, especially the high performance ones. This guy's dad's brother, which was his grandfather, ran the Lorraine plant and built this car for his brother and was passed down over the generations, and that's why it's so special, and that's how I got this really special options. So, we walk up to the car, you know, I always like to look at the serial number. If you look at the serial number on this car, it is a J, which means 429 Cobra Jet. You know, you got something super special at that point. Now let's open the hood. Now, the Ram Air Shaker ought to give, you, give that away to you, Alex. Super rare on these cars. Now, when you open the hood and you see this oil cooler, mm -hmm. okay, we've seen these on the, on the Shelby's. Right. Th that means this is a super Cobra Jet car. So now we've got a Torino Cobra 429 Cobra Jet super Cobra Jet car. How could it get any better? Well, let me show you. So let's look at the door tag which on these are a decal, they're not actually a warranty tag like on the 69 and 70 Mustangs. And here's what really sets this car apart and makes it super holy grail. I don't think I've ever said super holy grail, super holy grail. So you've got W for the axle. That is a 430 to one axle ratio, which is insane. That's what you'd want for drag racing. Still, it gets better. Your transmission code is a six. That's a close ratio four speed. So imagine a close ratio of four speed with a 431 gear coming out of the hole. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. It's one of the reasons you had the huge oil coolers to keep the motor cool while you're staging on the line. Okay? So you basically have a factory drag racing car. Now, a lot of these cars that these guys ordered for drag racing didn't put many options on them. This one's got power steering, power brakes, which in my opinion is huge. And if you look, a lot of these drag cars were bench seat cars and a lot of them were C6s. Bucket seat, 
console radio. Now, what I also want you to look at is look at the miles in this car. How many miles? 17,626. This car's got 17,626 actual miles on it. Okay, so when you start breaking down a Torino Cobra, Super Cobra Jet, drag pack, 431 gear car, out of all the cars ever built, depending on which expert you talk to, you're looking between 125 and maybe 140 cars. The majority of which were raced. This car's never been raced, wow. ever. It's original paint on this car. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Yeah. It's original paint on this car. And I think the last time it was registered. What's the, what's the color of the engine? It's actually red. The last time it was registered was 1986. So you've got literally a Holy Grail Torino. Now, this car has a couple of things on it that you're going to spot that we call day two things. Mm -hmm. Literally the second day the guy bought this car. Okay. Granted, he worked at the factory. He put these pinstripes on and they're not correct. Now, one of the things that really threw me off in this car when I first saw it was this body side molding. I'm like, golly, I can't believe the dealership put body side molding on this. Never seen that. This body side molding is on the build sheet. Mm -hmm. and It's the only car they ever got one. Talked to Kevin Marty, had him run the numbers. It's the only one that had body side molding. He was able to put it on there. His brother wanted it, and they actually did it at the factory. And here's something else that's really rare about the 431 cars. Everybody assumes that between those 125 and 145 that got the 430 gear in it, that it got a Detroit locker. It's actually not true. The true story is the factory ran out of them. So they went ahead and built the cars. So some of these cars showed up without Detroit lockers in them. And for, in order for you to prove that it was actually a Detroit locker car, which is very, very special, it's got to be on the build sheet. Guess what? It's on this build sheet. This car has four original build sheets and the owner's Serta card, you know, the ones sometimes we find in the glove boxes that has the aluminum strip for when you're in there for warranty, had never been out of the glove box. But something I want you guys to look at really close is look at the interior of this car. It may be one the best original interior I've ever seen on a Mustang or a Torino ever. It literally is concourse. It's That's like perfect. It, it looks like the car has never been sat in. And this is how we found it. Well, they didn't drive it, but they took really good care of it. Incredible care. Wow. All the chalk marks you can see on the car. You know, Alex, look up here. You can still see the OK mark, you know, even on the valve cover. All the original clamps are on the car. This is, I mean, this is a car that you would uh, use as a benchmark type car to judge with. Um, just unbelievable find. The other thing is on these cars, if you were to find one, most of these were raced and try to get one back to this condition. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, it is really close. For instance, that carburetor right there. When you look on the frame horn and, and check the number, mm -hmm. which I have checked the number, I photographed it, it's on our website, if you guys wanna see the really rare detailed photos and numbers of this go to cvjeep.com uh, tyler and kelsey took over a hundred photos of this car very detailed shots all the chalk marks stuff like that but anyways on the air horn of this carburetor this carburetor is for a 429 super coverage at four speed only so then when you go and look at the transmission number on this transmission you decode the transmission it is for a 70 429 super coverage at close ratio only. These are parts you would just never ever find. So this car is all numbers matching, all correct, never been restored, never been painted on, 100% original paint. There you go. What do you guys think? I think it definitely wow. is a super holy grail. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. That's really neat. So for those of you out there, let's get the young generation back into the game for classic cars and muscle cars. Alex is a great tech. He's working on them every day. Kelsey's studying them every day and help us rescue these cars. Let's get them back out in the public. I, I, I think it's, I'm honored to be the next caretaker of this car. One family owned since new, but now we're gonna get it back out in circulation. Hopefully the next collector is gonna take it to the shows. People will be in awe. Don't think you could ever restore one to this level. Thanks for watching. Please like, tag, share, and follow.